I don't even really like boxing, <laughs> but I like Creed a lot though. Why? I guess because they're not just about boxing, but they're also really powerful, motivational, inspirational, and emotional movies. Now, unfortunately, I've never really actually watched any of the original Rocky movies, but I do remember back at the start of 2019 was when I got introduced into this world for the very first time. I watched the first Creed movie online, and I watched Creed 2 in cinemas, and I absolutely adored them both, so I was really looking forward to this one, and this new one definitely packs the same spirit as the first two. Though I have to admit, uh, for some odd reason, I like the new one a little bit less than the previous two. Not that there's anything bad with that. But maybe that has to do with the story. Creed 3 takes place almost at the end of Adonis Creed's story where he has officially retired from his boxing career and now has a family to take care of. However, when a long lost childhood friend reappears in his life, more troubles arise and Adonis Creed has to step into the ring once again to battle against his past. You know, at first a part of me was like, did they really need to make another Creed movie? Honestly, I think just recently, very recently, I found out that a third one was coming out. And the premise is about this dude who just shows up out of nowhere and claimed to be almost a brother to Creed, but having not been mentioned at all in the previous two films. Almost reminds me to back in Fast 9 when uh, John Cena, supposedly Dom Toretto's brother in the movie, shows up at just completely out of nowhere. <laughs> but nah, now, after having watched it, I mean, I really don't mind it anymore, and it makes a lot of sense why this mysterious guy, played by Jonathan Majors, was never really mentioned. It all stems from Adonis Creed's childhood, wanting to run away from his past and forget his past troubles, and so this new movie really showed us a lot more of his backstory, which is great because we don't get too much of that in the first two movies. And the thing I like about it in this movie is that it doesn't come instantly. The film really builds up to it in a very tense way, you know? You can, you can, it's like you can almost feel there's something between them, but you really, do, you really don't really learn why until later on. And Jonathan Majors comes out with another W. He was the person to watch this movie and basically stole the show. He made me like him, he made me hate him, he made me understand him, and he made me feel for him. Similar to the previous movies, this movie really makes you feel for both the protagonist and the antagonist. And that's really one of the main things I really like about these movies. The, the acting really made me believe in these characters and these are the type of movies that sometimes really connects with the audience in a, like a much deeper and emotional level. And like I said, I don't even like boxing. I don't even watch it that much. I have never really even boxed as a kid. <laughs> Yet these movies oddly really makes me want to buy a boxing bag, some gloves and get in real good shape. <laughs> oh, it's funny. I love seeing the pain, the struggles, and the hardships boxers have to face and ultimately create story and what he had to overcome. And I guess that's why I kind of feel like I enjoyed the previous two movies a little bit more than this one. It's because I feel like this one, in a way, showed less of Creed's hardships, honestly. But it makes sense, though, because, you know, he's already been through so much pain. And he's, like, now older and he's kind of in his retired form and stuff, you know. So this movie was really ultimately just a showdown, but a, a soft, a bittersweet battle between old friends. That's a better way of saying it. And even though Jonathan Majors is pretty damn good in this, uh, I just wish we kind of saw a little bit more of his character, like maybe more official boxing battles and his rise. His rise and hardships, I feel like, wasn't really shown to their full extent, you know. It was mostly behind the scenes. In this movie, it was like he came from down here, all the way to the bottom, you know, he was just there. And then suddenly he's just like up there, <laughs> you know. And speaking of boxing battles though, they, they were still pretty glorious, as well as the entrances, the slow-mo shots were cool, and the fights were still pretty intense and fun. A bit less emotional and intense though, compared to like the previous uh, movies, but oh well, I guess it kind of makes sense, you know. 
<laughs> but you know what? I, I was actually thinking about this during like where and I was watching the movie. You know what I would have loved to watch? Uh, in addition to the you know the intense workout uh, plans or workout routines that they had was what they eat. <laughs> I mean, I know that you know in movies eating and food isn't actually shown that much, you know, because it's just a movie and there's time constraints and whatever. But I feel like food is a very important aspect in a boxer's diet. It's not a boxer's diet. What? Well, let me, let me rephrase that. A boxer's diet is very important, you know, for a boxer. So, I mean, I feel like I don't even think we saw him eat at all in this movie. It would have been a nice touch, I guess, to make it a little bit more realistic in a way. But it's whatever. Ultimately, Creed 3 still was a great movie to watch. Uh, it felt like a great ending to Adonis Creed's arc. And it still had the same spirit of the past two movies. But this one felt much more personal to Creed himself. Maybe there will be another one. I heard rumors that it, Creed's not ending. Maybe there'll be some spin-offs or whatever. I don't know why, how it would how why there would there be more i mean for some reason i already felt like creed ended at creed 2 or 3 or, or this one i don't know but it's because i mean he's already retired like well, what else more is there he can do you know actually a big part of me while i was watching uh this movie towards the end thought that there might be a future uh spin-off series involving uh, Donna's Creed's daughter, Amara, maybe, yeah, but then a part of me was like, oh god, no, please. I mean, it would be nice, but like, I feel like it's quite similar to, I can't remember anything off the top of my head, but it's kind of like, maybe, you know what, okay, this is just completely random, but <laughs> completely separate in a way too, but it's like the same kind of feeling as, you know, uh, Fantastic Beasts, and the original Harry Potter series, like, if you get a spin-off series that's kind of similar but different in a way, like involving Creed's daughter as an example, it's definitely not gonna live up to or be as good as the original. And maybe that's how people feel, I don't know, let me know what you think, because I've never watched any of the Rocky movies, maybe I will, I just never really picked up the opportunity to or thought I wanted to, even though I like Creed a lot. <laughs> it's weird, but let me know, is it the same? Like, you're watching Creed, and while it might be good, it still doesn't live up to the original movies? Maybe that's how people feel. Man, maybe that's how I would feel <laughs> if they come out with a spin-off as well, so... I don't know. But anyway, speaking of the ending, coming back to the ending, uh, I honestly didn't feel like it was as satisfying, I will have to say as the previous two movies. I mean, some people have said they still feel it was pretty satisfying. I just can't, I don't know, for some reason, I can't put a pin on it, but for some reason, I just didn't feel it, this movie. I don't know, I mean, the end, I, I just didn't feel it. I don't know, I expected it to go down a different path, but it was just such a, ending that worked out so perfectly there wasn't really any sense of urgencies like we experienced in the previous few and i mean that really got me going you know wondering oh shit is this gonna turn out horrible for our main protagonist um i'm not gonna say any more than that let's just say that the ending just wasn't as satisfying as what i would have hoped but still a great movie nonetheless i guess i'm going to give Creed 3 a b plus now, favorite Creed movie, I still think it's either one or two. Part of me would say two. Uh, I know Rotten Tomatoes won't agree with me, but <laughs> I mean, still, I, I don't know. But this probably was my least favorite Creed movie. I know a lot of people won't agree with me, probably. But yeah, I, I, it's weird. I remember rating the Creed 2. At least this was before I did movie reviews. I know I started in 2019, but this was... Maybe I did, you know what, one of my first ever videos on this channel, the 10 movies in 10 minutes uh, video, anyone remember that? Probably nobody, because that movie hasn't been, I mean, that video hasn't been viewed in fucking three years, probably. But <laughs> I think I talked about Creed 2 briefly in that video. Um, but I still remember, like, I wrote some dot points on it, like, on my fucking social media or whatever, and I rated it, I rated it like an A+. 
a flawless grade? Hmm, I don't know if I'd agree with me right now because I am more critical. I am definitely way more critical now. <laughs> um, always trying to nitpick, but also enjoy as well. But, you know, a part of me being like a critic now or like thinking in a critic's mindset is that I always have to be like, hey, I think this could have been better or this wasn't as good as a previous. And that's kind of what it is kind of like right now. But <laughs> I think it's funny uh, bringing that, like recalling those memories back. But yeah, even though I thought Ma Jonathan Majors does an excellent job in this movie, I mean, his character was pretty short-lived, a little bit, a little bit short-lived, you know, and I mean, this movie, I still feel like it was missing Sylvester Stallone, okay? I'm, if you haven't watched this movie, don't, I mean, I don't want to, I, I, I try not to spoil, but let's just say that Sylvester Stallone wasn't in this movie even though I expected him to be it uh, in it But the reason why was because he had a lot of differences with the script like he, he said I don't know I just read an article, but he was it was like he was unsure He didn't like the way Creed was headed. He didn't like the writer or the director I can't I think it was the writer, but he just didn't want to be a part of it anymore but the sad thing is this movie never really told us what happened with his character. It never told us what happened. So, yeah, I mean, he's still alive. You know, he survived Creed 1 and he survived Creed 2. And part of a lot of the emotional factors of those movies was to do with Sylvester Stallone's character. You know, and Sylvester Stallone's character was like, you know, Rocky. He was like a father figure, a father that Creed never had. So it was great seeing that kind of father-son relationship, whereas we, I feel like was kind of missing in this movie. But then again, we didn't really need it again, but still, I mean, it, this movie, some for some reason, still felt it was missing him. But yeah, anyway, that's about it. I'm done. I'm done talking. Uh, great movie, but I don't, I remember like I, me I remember the Creed two and one. At least I remember it back then when I first watched it uh, being better, yeah, or like enjoying it more. I would say. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think down below. Like and sub if you enjoyed. And as always, feel free to check out any of my previous videos. Uh, we got a lot. This is the month of March, and March, I don't know why, for some reason, has a lot of fucking jam pack. It's jam packed with movies. We got Scream 6, we got 65, we got Dungeons and Dragons, we got John Wick 4, what else? I didn't die to fuck. I don't know, <laughs> but I guess we'll see. It's pretty jam packed. Um, I'm I might say, but it is what it is. We'll see. But yeah, until next time, guys. <laughs>